Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. This is Joy Burkhardt. I'm the founder and executive director of 2020 Mom. We're so thrilled um, that you're with us today. We know there's about 30 of you online right now and many more that will be listening to the recording um, later. So welcome to all of you. Um, before we get started with today's webinar, I wanted to take just a moment to offer an opportunity to Christina, who is on the line with me, um, to say a quick hello and introduce herself as well. Christina. Hey, everybody. I'm Christina Delaney. Um, I have had the greatest privilege of being able to be involved with the Innovation Awards this year, and it has been um, truly an honor and uh, to see all the amazing work that so many people throughout the nation are doing um, for moms and families, and we're excited to have um, Natalie with Better Postpartum here today. Great. Thanks, Christina. Um, good. And before we introduce Natalie um, officially, I wanted to invite each of you to let us know um, your names online. We can see your names, but would love for you to use the chat feature uh, and let us know where you're from. Do you work for a nonprofit, a hospital? Are you in private practice as a clinician or therapist? Um, let us know uh, who you are and what you're up to. Um, I recognize some of your names already, but we'd love to know um, who's out there. So again, use the chat feature. I'm sorry, the question feature, not the chat feature, in the GoToWebinar control panel to let us know um, that you're out there. So feel free to introduce yourself and where you're from. So we've got, um, hi, Katie, a parent, uh, advocate, and PhD student from California. Great. And any others, if you feel like you want to introduce yourself, we'd love to know who's on the line. Um, we'll look at those, those questions uh, or introductions here throughout today's webinar. It's a good segue to remind folks that we have an opportunity um, to ask our presenter today, um, questions throughout today's webinar. So feel free to ask questions as we go. And we'll pause a few times during the session to um, answer those questions. Great, um, Lydia from Virginia. We see an advocate that's with us from a hospital setting. Um, oh, great. Um, um, UC San Diego, someone who runs the digital campaign there, and IBCLC, a lactation consultant in private practice based at a hospital. Um, welcome, Don. Uh, glad to have all of you on. Um, super. And uh, someone on from Las Vegas um, who is a maternity. Oh, I'm having a hard time opening up the whole message there, but welcome from Las Vegas. Um, postpartum support Virginia is on. So good to have all of you and, and quite a few others um, rolling in. So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Well, uh, we first wanted to, to share that this is the last Innovation Award webinar in our six-part series for, for the 2019 winners. Um, and we're going to be hearing from uh, the honorable mention in our community awards category. I also wanted to share that this is the third year of a three-year grant, um, and there have, have been six other webinars and presentations uh, aired before this one um, from 2018 and 2017, and all of this has been made possible through a grant from the Zoma Foundation. So thank you, um, Zoma Foundation. The goal of the Innovation Awards is to recognize important and groundbreaking work in the field of maternal mental health that can ultimately be adapted and adopted by others. Um, so without uh, further ado, I'm really pleased to welcome and congratulate again uh, Natalie Kalatnikov from Better Postpartum, who's here to talk about their award-winning social media campaign. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Hi, everyone. Great. And let me um, officially introduce Natalie by reading her bio. She's the founder of the... Um, uh, of the organization Better Postpartum uh, that's created an award-winning comprehensive eight-week online holistic wellness education program that features video interviews with home birth midwives, doulas, lactation consultants, nutritionalists, postpartum spe specialists like sleep consultants, and more, who all have one goal in mind, to empower women to have a better postpartum experience. Um, today, we'll get to hear from Natalie uh, on their award-winning program, a social media campaign, but she's also been featured 
in all sorts of great um, news outlets, um, has done a TED Talk. Um, she's been on Great Day Washington, Good, Good Morning Connecticut, et cetera. So you can find more information about Natalie online. Um, and without further ado, um, we're going to jump right in to learn more about the Get Her Better social media campaign um, with the beautiful hashtags and important hashtags. Um, nobody told me um, stories that moms were able to share uh, and also um, uh, share what would have made their postpartum better. So, Natalie, I'm going to move to the next slide and would love for you to tell us first a little bit about your team um, at Better, Better Postpartum. And if you wouldn't mind by starting, when did you found um, Better Postpartum and where are you based? And then let's talk about your team. Sure. So I am based in Stanford, Connecticut. I am a mother of two and I work predominantly from home. Um, but because I work in the online space, um, Better Postpartum isn't rooted to Connecticut. And so basically it's available to English speaking women worldwide um, because we have a large presence on Instagram. That's where we did our social media campaign. So our handle is at Better Postpartum. And we have only uh, almost 20,000 followers there. Um, and um, so, the, so the company was founded in 2018. So we are just two years old. We had our, our two year birthday just on, on New Year's actually, <laughs> 2020, um, because that's when we launched in 2018. Um, and the team is comprised of myself. So um, I'm the founder and creator. I started off uh, working in postpartum support as a trained postpartum support specialist who taught live postpartum support groups uh, local to myself in Connecticut, in Westport, Connecticut. The group was called Life After Birth. And uh, there I helped hundreds of women um, over the course of three years uh, deal with depression and anxiety and learn best care practices to avoid or alleviate any of the challenges that they were experiencing. Um, and so I learned so much from that experience that I decided to um, make it accessible to people outside of just my small reach that I was currently having in Fairfield County. Um, and that's why I wanted to bring it online. Um, so the rest of my team, as you see here, uh, Mary Sullivan uh, is in PR. So she has been tremendously helpful in promoting the campaign um, by, you know, getting us into the press. We have Blakely Lowry, um, who is our public health consultant. So um, Blakely found me because we just had such a common passion and she worked with a nonprofit called the Peter C. Alderman Foundation. Uh, that's what it was called at the time. It's now called Health Right International. And they had done work in Uganda um, surrounding postpartum education. So she was very interested in what I was bringing to the table because um, the project that they did over in Uganda was that they exposed the women there who had screened positive and symptomatic for postpartum depression to as little as just one hour of postpartum education that was teaching them coping mechanisms and best care practices um, so that they would feel better. And they found that 80% of them reported feeling better uh, after just a matter of weeks after receiving this education. So that's why she wanted to become involved in our organization and helping advise us as well, um, because she obviously believes that postpartum education is a solution um, to helping women with perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. Um, Nubia Wilson is someone that Mary worked with in PR, um, and she also helped with press-related initiatives. And Igor Talatnikov, you'll notice that we have the same last name because that is my husband, and he has become one of my strategic advisors as well, um, because he is a serial entrepreneur, and so um, he has been extremely resourceful uh, as an advisor to me as well. Great. Thanks, Natalie. That's, that's a helpful overview. And for those of you who've joined our Innovation Award webinars in the past, you may be thinking, well, it's interesting to see, and Natalie, you didn't mention it, but an LLC, right, versus a nonprofit. And um, we're seeing LLCs crop up and doing great work in the space and look and feel a lot like nonprofits. So 
um, just congratulations to the work and success um, that you've you've been able to accomplish um, in just a couple uh, short years as an LLC. Um, excellent. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide, where we're going to talk about a little, uh, the timeline for the social media awareness campaign. And I think um, it would be helpful, Natalie, before you walk through the timeline, um, first just remind us again, do a little level set on what was the social media campaign, um, what was the theme, how did you do it? I think you'll talk about the timeline and why that was um, significant, um, the hashtags, and uh, I know at the end you'll talk about impact, but just a little groundwork laying for us to get our bearings before you jump into the, the timeline, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So the social media campaign that we ran uh, with using the hashtag nobody told me was in order to promote and raise awareness for the fact that our postpartum education program existed and that it is a solution that exists. For women, so um, it, it was just a awareness and education campaign, um, not only about um, the fact that women need post better postpartum education, right? Uh, that's a big need because um, we the premise was we really didn't want women to have to say nobody told me anymore, right? So so many women had personal stories of their own experiences postpartum where uh, they felt, you know, nobody told me that this was a sign or a symptom of depression or anxiety. And therefore, I thought that this is a normal part of motherhood and I didn't get the help that I needed, um, you know, or, you know, I, I didn't know enough um, about what I was experiencing to know that there were red flags. And so we're really trying to educate women um, so that they can again, avoid or alleviate these challenges. Um, either in pregnancy, they can learn best care practices that they can be preventative, as preventative as possible, obviously, <laughs> um, about approaching this sort of thing. Um, and if they're already experiencing challenges when they find us, um, you know, to know then what resources exist, who to turn to for help, um, you know, what's normal versus not normal. A big delineation that we made um, was discussing things that are common versus normal, as in symptoms of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders are quite common. They're absolutely rampant in society today. But just because they're common, we don't want to normalize them and sweep them on, under the rug. We want you to know that that's not a normal facet of a woman's health, right? And so to be able to make that differentiation so that you can get the help that you need. So that was really the premise of the campaign. And um, we, to bring us to the timeline now, we decided to run the campaign for nine months because we thought that was a clever way to bring attention to, you know, the gestation period. We're talking about pregnancy, birth, and the whole birthing continuum. So not just pregnancy and labor and delivery, but everything that comes afterwards. And one of my favorite things to highlight about why the postpartum period is so, so crucial for women to pay attention to and get educated about um, is because women commonly spend a lot of time preparing for labor and delivery. They'll take, you know, childbirth education. That's become quite mainstream because it's been around for 70 years already. Um, it was invented in the 1950s. And, you know, today um, it's estimated that about 70% of childbearing women take some sort of childbirth education course to prepare for just getting through labor and delivery, um, you know, with breathing techniques and, and that sort of thing, right? We're familiar with that. But there really was no such mainstream thing that existed for all of the things that come up in a woman's life after birth that can be challenging. And so um, that was the gap that Better Postpartum Education now fills, you know, our online postpartum education program that's at betterpostpartum.com. And so in an effort to raise awareness for this, we decided to make the campaign nine months long. We, we would start it on Labor Day because it's a play on labor and birth and end it on Mother's Day. Those two holidays are nine months apart. So we were really centric to the, the motherhood theme. Um, and when we started off with our social media campaign launch, um, we used the first four months, so plenty of time, just secure individual participants. 
so what that means is we went to our own circles. You know, you start in your own sphere of influence, um, the people that you work with directly, the people that you know, your family, your friends, um, you know, your coworkers and the people that are already in your um, communities, if you, if you are someone that has an online presence. Um, you secure these individual participants that you know have a story to tell and will um, share on their own social media and, and um, you know, tag others and just gain exposure and momentum for your hashtag. And the reason that we gave it so much time is because um, in order to get to the next step, which was the next four to five months that we spent securing influencer participants, um, we would have never been able to get traction with major influencers had we not had something to already point to that was successful and show them this is what women are saying, this is the power of, of the message, and you know, this is the campaign. Um, so you really have to have kind of a detailed, um, almost like a press kit, uh, essentially, a well graphically designed, beautiful press kit for your social media campaign that you can send to these influencers, celebrities, and people, you know, just general people of influence um, in order to make it more enticing for them to participate. Um, so that's why we did it in that way. We had to have the numbers behind us before we went to the influencers. And then um, as a result of all of this hard work, um, by the time May rolled around, we had reached our first 10,000 followers on social media. So I didn't mention it here, but when we started the campaign, we had half as many followers. We had about 5,000 followers um, at the time. And so we literally doubled as a result of this social media campaign. And um, the campaign culminated um, at Mother's Day. Um, when we did our uh, our first TED Talk, um, which was very exciting because that in and of itself got us even more exposure and that was kind of the next stepping stone um, to promoting and raising awareness about what we do. Excellent. I am um, going to pause for questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions about this timeline, Etc. Would love to um, to hear them. Oh, uh, well, what was the name of the nonprofit um, uh, that one of your team players was with? Was it Health Right? I think that's what you said, Natalie. Yes, Health Right International. Great, Health Right International. Let's just see if there's any other questions. So tell us again the name of your TED Talk. Oh, um, I didn't mention it. Thank you for asking. The TED, TED Talk is called For Birthing Women, Knowledge is Power, Community is Immunity, which is a long title. Why don't you email that to us, and we'll make sure it goes out with the need and invitation. Or I'm sorry, the recording uh, uh, information to everyone who's on the line or listening. Um, retrospectively yeah, if, if it's easier... Time. Yes, and if it's easier to remember, if you go to my website, betterpostpartum.com, it's on the home page. So that, that might be easier than typing in that title, but I will send it to you, Joe. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Better post well, we want people to check out your website anyway, so that sounds wonderful. Um, <laughs> so someone's asking a great, great question is, um, tell us more about how you recruited influencers, and then did you end up having to pay them? Ah, yes. Um, so I think we actually get to that on a further slide if you if you want to hold on that one, Joy. It's up to you. Sure. Let's hold on that one. And let's just move into this um, this quote. And we were wanting to ask a little bit about how you got started, um, whether an LLC that's launching an awareness campaign or a nonprofit or a hospital um, often there's there's a need for some funding to get started. And tell us a little bit about this quote and also um, where your initial funding came from um, and where others might be able to find similar funding. How much did it cost, et cetera? Yeah, so um, the great thing about this campaign is that 
it really didn't cost anything to get started. It was only in that second phase when we wanted to start getting influencers and brands um, and other people of interest who would only promote the posts um, if they were paid and sponsored posts that, uh, you know, funding even became an issue. Um, because we have a product and we are an LLC, as Joy mentioned, um, you know, some of the initial and sustained funding was simply um, just a form of the profit that we had made from sales. So because I have an online platform, um, you know, on Instagram, social media at Better Postpartum, uh, I would run flash sales and all sorts of um, sales to my audience um, in which they could purchase our postpartum education program online um, at a discount and then we would have, you know, money to play with for um, this kind of awareness campaign. Um, but it really didn't take much, uh, surprisingly. Great, and do you mind just talking a little bit about what those start startup funds um, were and who did you pay? Sure, I mean, so I believe that we spent under $1,000 um, on the entire campaign, and that was just to maybe um, two to three influencers who um, required payment, because when you're doing a campaign that's um, such a passion project like this, if you're targeting the right influencers and brands that you already know, um, you know, have personal stories of uh, depression or anxiety or our new mothers and you know you know that they have infants at home if you're targeting um, the right people they're going to want to participate just because they care <laughs> um, which is a beautiful thing and really um, how this all becomes so successful you know you don't want to get into a place where um, you feel like you're selling out and paying everyone to participate in a social media campaign it should be something that kind of generates its own and snowballs its own buzz if you will um, so uh, you know and then you get to be discerning about where your dollars are spent you know because maybe you say you know this one influencer who has you know, 50,000 followers, for example, it would be so valuable to get this information out to that audience. Um, and I don't think I have a lot of crossover there. They don't know about me yet. And so that's where I want to spend uh, my dollars. And, and so it, it gets kind of easy to be discerning about your spending that way. That's great. I think incredibly helpful. Um, excellent. Anything else you want to point out um, for us about, about this beautiful quote from you? Oh, um, I, you know, I think um, I covered that it's, it's kind of, it was, it was easy to, um, it was easy to fund because it didn't take a lot of funding. So, you know, when you're thinking in terms of doing your own social media campaigns, um, just know that it's a ton of legwork and letter writing and reaching out and, you know, you feel like you're messaging people all day and you've made your press kit and there's, a, you know, there's a lot of investment in terms of time and energy, um, but it doesn't have to be a lot of investment in terms of spending. Great. Yep. Just capacity sometimes. Uh, excellent. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Um, talk to us again about impact. Uh, you gave us the punchline about 20,000 people on Instagram. Tell us, tell us more. Anything else you want to point out? So um, I think it was thrilling because, as I mentioned, our followers doubled as a result of this impact. We had we not only gained 5,000 followers, but we also had a total of 5,000 people who participated um, in the Nobody Told Me post and shared their own personal stories, which was just so absolutely thrilling to leaf through and see. Um, the posts themselves uh, got 25,000 likes on social media. So, you know, in, in terms of just, you know, people with smaller audiences combined with our um, bigger influencers, um, they pulled in, we know that they pulled in that many eyeballs, right? So we know that 
25,000 people read and liked at least one of our campaign posts, which is huge reach. Um, and also um, interesting was that we got to survey um, all of our new followers um, just using Instagram stories, which is a really um, great tool actually for collecting data. Um, I think sometimes people are weary of it because it doesn't feel very official, but it absolutely is because you can attribute every single vote to a user and nobody can vote twice. And so um, if you're familiar with Instagram and you know what I'm talking about, um, you can ask questions of your audience in your Instagram stories. Um, you can take polls. And so we asked them once we had amassed all these new followers and, and completed our campaign, um, we asked them how they felt about the campaign. You know, did you appreciate the fact that we introduced you to postpartum education and that we helped you learn about it when you didn't otherwise know it existed? And we found out that 95% of our audience said, yes, thank you for telling me about this. Um, you know, I wish I had known about this sooner, which was thrilling. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm looking at a couple of the questions that came in. And before uh, you jumped into impact, there was one other question that came back in. I'm sure there'll be some questions about impact here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about staff time? Like how much time were you able to track the hours that you invested in your PR firm, anyone else who was actually like running the campaign, if it wasn't you, can you can you give us a sense for how much time you invested and, and at what point in the nine months? <laughs> yeah, I can certainly try. So I know in terms of other people because I did tally their hours. And so I didn't have I didn't have PR work more than five hours a month on this. Um, so that also kept it very cost effective for me. You know, I, I should have mentioned that that was a part of the budget. Um, but the, you know, a, a good PR person in, you know, in my experience can cost around 50 to $75 an hour, maybe up to a hundred. Um, and so I capped that cost at, you know, no more than five hours per month. And so the rest of the work, um, was all done by me. Um, it's harder for me to gauge how many hours I spent on it because I would say, you know, that I spent probably at least two hours a day for the entire, over the course of the entire campaign, um, devoted just to this particular project, um, the social media campaign. So it, it certainly was a lot of, um, legwork, but if you have the time to invest, and you don't have to pay other people to do it, then it's quite doable. Great. You know, and two, and two hours a day, I know that sounds a little daunting, but two hours a day isn't really that hard. If you're really excited and passionate about launching something like this, you know, it, you can find the time. You know, I would, I would sometimes do it, you know, before my children woke up in the morning and then after they went to bed at night and those were the two hours, you know. So um, don't let it sound daunting. <laughs> Right. Good. Um, excellent. Let's just see if there are any other questions that came in around impact. And I'm just seeing a couple more, you know, a few more introductions. Let's welcome Becky and Christina, New York, Florida, all sorts of um, locations. So welcome. Lots of parent educators um, working with teen mothers. Um, welcome, everyone. Good. I think we'll move on to the next slide then. All right, I think you hit on some of these things, but walk us through this slide too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is all about scaling, right? So you can anyone can start an awareness campaign by you know cooking up a really creative hashtag and then reaching out to the people that they know in their circle to post using that hashtag, right? Um, in order to scale and get beyond that point where you know that's where some people get stuck, um, you have to look to, um, again, brands, organizations, um, nonprofits, other, you know, collaborating, um, you know, hospitals or, you know, whoever is in your network, um, 
you know, doulas, midwives, lactation consultants, anyone who interfaces with a pregnant or postpartum woman. You know, um, I think it can be it can be a longer list than you would think. You know, you can even, you know, prenatal yoga instructors, um, you know, babysitters and nannies. And, um, you know, there's kind of this big umbrella. Um, so not to limit yourself and to go big at first and just and just think about who touches the lives of pregnant and postpartum women um, that can share this information with them and that may want to participate based on the mission or based on something that you may know of their own personal experience or something that they shared. Uh, for example, there you know are a slew of celebrities that have come out in the press admitting that they struggled with perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, you know, and so um, we made sure that we reached out to all of them uh, with our mission. And even though it's harder to hear back from some of them, I mean, those are the type, that's the kind of net that you have to cast um, in order to get a lot of participation. Um, oh, this I hadn't mentioned yet. This is a good one. So one of the ways that you can get influencers to participate without necessarily having to pay for them to sponsor a post for you is um, you can offer to promote their post to your audience for extra incentive. So um, I'll break that down. So if you're asking someone to participate in your campaign, you're saying, can you please post on your own page to your own network using my hashtag and sharing your nobody told me story? Um, and then, you know, telling them why you wish somebody told you and, and how, you know, women deserve a better postpartum, right? That was the premise in our example. Um, and so what you can then do in turn is say, well, I'm going to cross promote you. So if you are a brand or someone who would also benefit from being seen by my audience, you know, then then it's kind of a, an equal share. It's a cross-promotional share. Um, so that actually happened a lot. You know, there would be, for example, um, some authors that I reached out to that wrote books on parenting, for example, and they wanted to get the word out about their books on parenting just as much as I wanted to get the word out about raising awareness about better postpartum, online postpartum education program. Um, and so they would post using our hashtags and then we would share to our audience and we'd say, look, even the author of blah parenting book, you know, um, believes in our mission kind of thing. And so it works for both parties that way. Um, <clears throat> and then, yes, we talked about how, of course, some influencers only accept paid promotional arrangements. So you might need to budget a little bit for that. That's great. I think especially nonprofit organizations don't think to do do that type of um, work or feel like we should take out Facebook ads or things like that. So it's really helpful to hear how you had great success here. Um, we've got one more um, slide, I think. It's, oh, no, we're, it was a wrap-up slide, but we did want to um, pause. There was another uh, question or two that came in. One was regarding... Um, why you chose to be on the social media outlets that you're on. Um, and someone pointed out, I see that you're not on Twitter. Um, do you also have an e-newsletter? Like, tell us more about your reach or why you are on certain channels and not others. Sure. So um, I learned early on that it is better to pick, like, two, I'd say three maximum social media platforms that you want to be really active and engaged on um, because it's hard to be a master of all trades. So um, it, it, the workload becomes more difficult to upkeep several different accounts than it does if you say, you know, Instagram is going to be my primary um, channel where I really give a lot of quality content and I spend a lot of time and, and that's what really enriches your community and helps it grow in the first place. And, um, you know, you learn hacks like, for example, Instagram, you can share directly to Facebook. So that's only one post and it gets posted in two platforms uh, kind of thing. So um, it's, it's kind of about trying to be um, 
you know, a master at one instead of, you know, a jack of all trades where all of your platforms suffer a little bit from neglect. <laughs> That's right. And to think about your primary audience, right? We have some folks, it seems like the majority work directly with mothers. So of course, Instagram, right? Facebook, where you are, makes sense uh, for those that are mm-hmm. in hospital settings or working with um, you know, professionals in some ways too, not just mothers or patients. Um, it does feel like you know, Twitter, or LinkedIn, like there's other places um, that you might consider um, being. And, and Natalie, thank you for reminding us, just like in motherhood, right? We can't do it all. So figure out you know, one or two places that you really want to go deep and do a really good job um, at and feel great about the outcome. So you've done that for sure. Um, made a great impact here. Um, I thought we, we should end um, and would love your thoughts on this too, Natalie. But it's, um, it's a good reminder that there is a national Maternal Mental Health Awareness Week campaign that runs in May. And Natalie, I think we need to recruit you to join that planning committee, honestly, and help with reach, um, especially for those of you that are regional or local and local and national organizations. This is a U.S.-based um, campaign and one that we would like everyone to participate in um, and sign up to receive updates for. So I'm going to just pop over to the blue.project.org and um, note that we love Natalie's better plus part of that com logo because it is a blue dot and, and not on purpose, but um, there do seem to be a lot of great um, synergies around the work that we're all doing. And uh, these blue dots seem to pop up often. So it's you know, fun to see that. I'm going to just take you all to my internet page. You're going to see all sorts of things here, but I do want to show you all the blue dot project dot, um, dot org. So this is a national um, U.S. It's not federally funded, but um, uh, runs across the U.S. And in conjunction with um, uh, Wednesday, which is World Maternal Mental Health Day in May, um, it overlaps that World Maternal Mental Health Day. That's the campaign that PSI runs. This is a U.S.-based campaign. You can see Maternal Mental Health Awareness Week. We'll look at the 2019 page. The 2020 page is going up this week as we speak. Um, but you can see the Making Over Motherhood um, um, campaign logo. The new logo again will be up shortly. Uh, mothers can sign up to take the pledge, um, uh, take the pledge to share um, real motherhood stories. You can see um, real motherhood struggles and things like that. Um, and I can't help but think that there's a a, uh, a way to, to integrate some of um, the work that you've done in your campaign, Natalie, with this one, too. Um, lots of great. Yeah, overlap. I'd be honored. That's, be yeah. Yeah, that's great. All of us can be doing all these great things um, together, of course, in our own ways. Um, but it's wonderful for us to come together this one week in May um, and really get behind one national um, movement and campaign. Um, well, there's a one or two other questions that seem to be coming in. And just a reminder, um, uh, we we don't actually share the slides generally um, for these Innovation Award um, presentations. We do share the recording, but Natalie, maybe you would be open to sharing the slides. Um, if folks are interested in receiving the slides, why don't you email Christina, um, Christina at 2020mom.org and um, Natalie, why don't you let us know if you're willing to share, if there's anything else you want to add to your slides before she shares them, and we'll make sure we share them in PDF form. Um, yeah, I'd be happy please. to share. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Good. Well, um, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up, but Natalie, I'll give you the last word. If there's anything else, the words of wisdom, advice that you want to share with uh, our attendees, Love for you to do that. Um, now. Yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to message me personally, um, I'm happy to answer questions. If you know, if if you want to take things offline, you can email me at natalie at betterpostpartum.com. I'm happy to help you. You know, work out some simple logistics if you're thinking about doing your own campaign, uh, or you can DM me if you follow me on Instagram at betterpostpartum. I always respond really quickly there because I spend a lot of my time there. Um, and then you can check out our Instagram page also and, and just how it functions. Um, you know, I try to run the Instagram page kind of like a free 
postpartum support group online where, you know, women can write in. Um, and I help them, you know, personally and privately if they want to share. I share in stories and other women can write to them and comment and kind of help each other. So it's a beautiful community. So I invite you to check that out also. And um, as a last aside, if you are interested in finding out more about our online education program, definitely please also find me on Instagram or email me at the email address that I provided. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone about um, opportunities to become a licensed provider of the program um, or an affiliate of the program. We, we actually have our first hospital in Pennsylvania, Doylestown Health. Um, that's going to provide our program to uh, over a thousand birthing patients at their facility this year, which is very exciting. And and Health Rate International, as I mentioned, is also working to raise funding in order to promote the adoption of our program in 50 different hospital systems in New York. Um, so if this sounds, you know, like something that's interesting to you, please follow up and contact me. And thank you so thank much you for so having much, me. Natalie. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us and sharing your expertise with everyone. We will um, send out with a recording that goes out um, information about Better Postpartum. You can find all of their social media handles on their website. We'll make sure that's included. And also, if, uh, if willing, we can send a link to the PDF set of the slide deck to everyone. Um, thanks so much, Natalie. Thank you, everyone. Um, and if you haven't yet registered for the 2020 Mom Forum, I'm going to um, give a quick plug for that because seats are selling out quickly. There's webcasting opportunities available uh, for communities that want to share the content, the two-day content um, with your community. We have um, experts from um, in mental health parity, um, from the Kennedy Forum. We have a journalist from the New York Times. Uh, we have a, an amazing panel and lineup um, on peer support and the use of certified peer specialists and peer support in maternal mental health. So kind of a new emerging opportunity there. Um, we also have um, a, a, a session on measurement, how to know for moving the needle in maternal mental health, the new HEDIS measure. We're talking about new laws, uh, national laws, state laws, um, trends in maternal mental health. So lots of great work for change agents that will be shared and would love to have you all join us here in Los Angeles, February 12th and 13th um, or online. So feel free to take a, take a look at the, the forum webpage um, at 2020mom.org. And Natalie, again, th congratulations. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Great work. Um, and we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care, everyone.